Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations to the elect. All right, starting with the Tabernacle of David. All right, as well as the large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on. All right, the name of the Most High. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh, Bahashem, in the name of Yahweh Shah, the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem, in the name of Rachakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit sent from on high, all right, in these latter days, into the minds of the remnant, starting with the servants, the prophets, to go out and preach the new song, all right, to those who have ears to hear. And eyes to see also condemnation, all right, to the powers that be, the heathen nations, and two-thirds of our people, all right? And today we're going to uh, dive into Revelation, the seventh chapter, all right, dealing, all right, spot on with that remnant, all right, which the importance of the remnant, as we uh, focus on, is that they will be heirs to the promise that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, and Jacob's 12 sons. All right, now, when you get Isaiah, all right, the uh, first chapter, it's a very spiritual thing that's said here. This is Isaiah 1 and 9, you know, because we know the history of rebellion amongst our people, all right? But we also know that there was a promise made, all right? So, this is Isaiah 1 and 9, except Yahweh. The Lord of hosts have left us a very small remnant. You see, we should have been as Sodom and we would have been like unto Gomorrah, meaning we would have been destroyed. All right. But from the foundation of the earth, the heavenly father, through his only begotten son, set up a remnant. All right. That will be justified. All right. And that remnant starts with the 144,000. All right. The tabernacle of David. All right. That Christians and everyone else. Who've taken this Bible in their hand have sought to undermine, all right, via their pseudo sciences, lies, religions, emotions, all right. But the true servants, the prophets, are here to establish the truth of this Bible is that the Heavenly Father is going to establish the throne of David, all right, which is made up of Israelites, all right. And then there's going to be a large multitude, all right, that are going to be delivered and receive mercy as well. And that is known as that small remnant, okay? So when you get the understanding, we'll look up, all right, the uh, remnant, you know, because when you deal with, you know, the billions of people that are, on, that are on the earth, all right, and the billions of Israelites, all right, as we'll go into prophecy where Israel will be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant, all right, will be uh, justified at the return of, of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ to be heirs to the promise, all right, to receive what is known as the first dominion, all right? Now, we know all Israel will eventually be saved, but not, all right, on the first go around, but we'll get into those things, uh, you know, as the lesson goes on. Now, we're going to start with the word remnant in the Hebrew, all right, Sha-Ra-Yad, all right, survivor, remnant, that which is left. All right, a survivor. All right, and that's what ultimately uh, we hope to be a part of. And the root word is sharad. And these are both beautiful Hebrew names uh, to escape. All right, to survive. All right, and we know the prophecy in Isaiah, the uh, tenth chapter, which we'll get later, is that the remnant are going to be likened unto those that escape, escape from who? The hands of the enemy. All right, and when we go in times past. You know, Esau, Edom, all right, he hated what was known as runaway slaves. Now, within the system of Edomite supremacy, we are his subjects, all right? But he has a plan to mark us and to make us his servants forever, all right, via his pseudoscience, his technology, and everything else he has going, all right? But the Heavenly Father has preserved a remnant, okay, to escape, okay, his plans, and ultimately be justified and pure in the sight and the eyes of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, okay, 
which is going to be a, a life to our nation because if the heavenly father did not preserve that remnant we would all be destroyed okay we would all be marked we would all be jabbed we would all be ultimately uh finished all right and we wouldn't uh, uh, have any heirs to the promise that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when you deal with Revelation, the seventh chapter, okay, as we'll read, is dealing with the 144,000 and then that large multitude, okay, which is that small remnant, all right, which the importance of that small remnant is to be heirs to the promise that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now remember, Okay, when you go back to Abraham, okay, who was a descendant of Adam, all right, through Seth, all right, through Enoch, through uh, ultimately going to Noah, Shem, or Faxad, on down the line, Abraham, who was raised as a heathen, was reintroduced to his legacy, all right, via mercy, while he was in an uncircumcised state, all right, just like we are here, because he was in a, a physical Babylon. He was in the Ur of the Chaldees. All right, light <laughs> of the magicians, the magi's. You see the 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 true witches and, and warlocks, which this society and the heads of it, the Edomites. All right, have t taken from that knowledge. This is why this is known as Babylon the Great. Okay. Well, Abraham was born in a society just like we were. Okay, and his father, okay, uh, uh, was a part of a falling away. The sons of God weren't, okay, uh, 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 following the traditions that were passed down from Adam. They were keeping the customs of the heathen that were round about. So the Heavenly Father used Abraham as a tool, okay, uh, uh, to reintroduce himself, all right, to that nation, all right. And ultimately, Melchizedek blessed Abraham. And we're going to go into ultimately what was said to Abraham when he was uh you know at the time he was abram and uncircumcised so let's listen it says in genesis 13 and 16 so we're just going to follow the promise that was given unto abraham isaac and jacob real briefly um because th th this is very important in understanding the holy scriptures all right it says and i will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Okay, arise and walk through the uh, land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. You see, so there was a land promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, which is ultimately going to be the headquarters of the kingdom of heaven. Now, we know ultimately the earth is made for our sakes. As a matter of fact. Let's get that uh, in Second Edges, the uh, sixth chapter, and I start at uh, fifty-four. It says, "And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people whom thou hast chosen. All right, and the people whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world." For our sakes, the world is made for our sakes, but there's going to be a headquarter, all right, and that is Jerusalem, all right, and we'll get into that, you know, as we uh, continue going on, um, and it says, as for the other people which come of Adam, thou hast said they are nothing but be likened unto a spittle, and hast likened them unto the abundance of a drop that falleth from the vessel, and now, O Lord, behold these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us and devour us all right so the heathen ultimately are in rulership they even have rulership over uh at this point <laughs> the 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 region of the the promised land right as a matter of fact let's get this in luke 21 or luke 24 let's just read this uh, Luke 21 and 24 okay it says uh, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword this happened in 70 AD and from that point we've been scattered okay and led away captive into all nations okay which is a fulfillment of prophecy that the Israelites the seed of Abraham Isaac and Jacob will be scattered and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles 
until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So as Ezra is saying here, okay, uh, these heathen, you know, who the Heavenly Father has regarded as nothing, all right, has uh, ultimately began to be lords over us. Well, that's via prophecy, you see, but there's an end to that, you see, where the true seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, a remnant will be brought back to the land to fulfill that promise, and we'll get into all of that. So we're going to jump to uh, Genesis 15 and 3, as Abraham was given this promise, okay, what did he say? In Genesis 15 and 3, it says, And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir, his servant, Abimelech, I believe, and behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he sh that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. All right, and what is an heir? Let's look that up. An heir, Yarash, okay, to seize, okay, and that's why the scriptures say the saints shall take the kingdom, because it's ours, to take possession of, to inherit. Okay, now when you look up the word inherit, all right, this is our inheritance. Remember the Lord said we would discontinue from our heritage. Now heritage is dealing with a landmass, but then there is a way and a mindset, all right, to upkeep that land, all right, which we separated from, which is the law, statutes, and commandments. All right, now it says to take possession of, to occupy, all right, it says to receive money property or a title as an heir at the death of a previous holder all right now um abraham is asking the lord you know you gave me this you promised me this land but who's going to be heir to that promise all right so the lord said him that come forth out of thy bowels out of thy loin shall be thine heir all right which we're going to show you that's isaac it says and he brought him forth abroad and said look now to the heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be see that so shall thy seed be so the seed of abraham at some point through isaac and jacob as we'll show you will be as the sand of the sea all right but only a remnant will return to be heirs to that promise and we're, that's what we're going to get into with revelation the uh, seventh chapter let's go to genesis the 17th chapter and we're just going through these uh, scriptures, but um, you should read through these chapters to gain understanding, all right? Um, study to show thyself approved, all right? Now, this is uh, Genesis 17 and 15, and God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, all right, princess, all right? And I will bless her and give thee a son also for her, Yea, and I will bless her, and she she shall be a mother of nations. All right, a mother of nations. What nations? All right, the nations <laughs> that would stem forth from Isaac and Jacob. All right, that's the narrative here. All right, it says, uh, "Kings of people shall be of her, of her. Kings of people shall be of her." Now, did all of the rest of Abraham's children come of her? No, and we're going to prove that. It says, Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And see, that's the reason that men are valuable. No matter how old we are, we can be 99, 100. If we can, you know, uh, 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 issue forth seed, you know, pretty much one man can issue forth enough seed to repopulate regions. <laughs> see, but anyway... It says, and, and shall Sharah, that is 90 year old, bear? Okay. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. You see? Because Isaac was not yet born uh, yet. And here, listen. And God said, Sharah, which Ishmael was one of Abraham's sons, right? But was he the son of the promise? No, he was born of the bondwoman which uh, Galatians goes into that. It says, And God said, Shara thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, 
and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Pay attention. See, and I will establish my covenant with him, Isaac. See, not Ishmael. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. So Ishmael received a blessing. Even Esau received a blessing as we go forward. Right. But who has received the blessing of the chosen? Who has received the blessing of heirs to the promise of that land, which is ultimately going to be the hub of the kingdom of heaven? Okay. And I will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. And Ishmael has thrived. Ishmael, which are the so-called Arabs, have been blessed, right? Look at them. They, 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 I mean, you know, they have their, their portion, all right? But my covenant, see, my agreement, my testimony, testament, will I establish with Isaac. You see? Which Sharah shall bear unto thee at this set time next year. So this is a whole year before he was born. You see? So, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac. Let's keep going forward. Okay, now this is the Heavenly Father speaking to Isaac. Okay? This is when Isaac was amongst uh, those uh, Hamites, I believe. All right? Verse 26, and the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. All right. Sojourn in this land and I will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries. See that it was promised to Abraham. Now he's showing you that that promise is being passed down to Isaac and I will perform the oath which is a promise. Now, Christianity is establishing that this oath is broken. All right. And now the promise that was given unto Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is no, no more. And now Christians, anyone who believes in Jesus Christ are heirs to this promise. But what we're going to show you is that no Israelites, the remnant. All right. Are being set up. So you have to understand what you're waking up for. You're not waking up to boast in any, uh, you know, carnal or earthly thing. We're going to boast in the kingdom, right? You are awakening to the fact that you're an Israelite. You have been given this word to go preach and teach. You have woken up to the fact that you're an Israelite and understand these things to be heirs to the promise. You see, we cannot forget these very, very important facts. You see? This is an oath. I will give thee all these countries and perform the oath, which I swear unto thy father, Abraham. And I will make thy seed. See, to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thee thy seed. All right. I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. All right. Now, that's starting with ultimately the Israelites that are scattered amongst these nations. All right. But in another sense, yes, all of the nations of the earth. All right. Outside of Esau, Edom will be blessed when the chosen seed. All right. The sons of God take dominion under Yahawashai because righteous order will be set up. Yes, there will be a period of them being paid back, beaten over the head with a rod of iron, put in cat hardcore captivity will still always be subject. But after the 1,000 year period, if they uh, uh, bless us, they will be blessed. As a matter of fact, that's in the book of Tobit. Let's get that real quick. Tobit, the 13th chapter. All right. Tobit 13 and 11. Many nations shall come from far to the name of the Lord God with gifts in their hands even gifts to the king of heaven. All generations shall praise thee with great joy. Cursed are they which hate thee and blessed be they which shall love thee forever. So in the kingdom of heaven, when you heathen go off, you'll be, you know, put in check just like here in Esau's kingdom. You know, you go off, you don't pay your taxes. You know, you don't stop at a stop sign. All right. What, what happens? Ultimately, you are uh, uh, cursed. All right. Well, in our kingdom, you're going to have to keep the law, statutes and commandments. The holy days and everything else you see 
And when you do those things, you'll be blessed. Let's keep reading. Rejoice and be glad for the children of the just, for they shall be gathered together and shall bless the Lord of the just. And that's going to be a blessing to the earth within itself to have Yahweh Shai, all right, and his people, starting with the 144, as the rulers of the earth. You see? Oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. Blessed are they which have been sorrowful for all thy scourges, for they shall rejoice over thee when they have seen all thy glory, and they shall be glad forever. You see? So, yeah, these, these nations, they're going to pay tribute. You know, they're ultimately going to be put down. But when they keep our ways, they'll be blessed. So a lot of people like to use this scripture, all right, Genesis 26 and 4, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries. See? See? They're going to be as the stars of heaven, but they're still going to be heirs to all of these countries, right? Which is the, 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 the hub of pretty much where we're going to rule out of starting in Jerusalem in the kingdom of heaven. All right? And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now, when Abraham received the voice of the Lord, when the Lord came to him and made himself known unto him, he was an idol worshiper, right? Uncircumcised, all right? And that's ultimately the, the, uh, the same story we have as we were uh, born in this, you know, spiritual Babylon in different, you know, uh, captivities where we're scattered. But when we receive this word, all right, in our uncircumcised state, we obeyed, all right, the, the voice of the Heavenly Father and kept his charge. Now, what is his charge? Okay, his charge, ma sha ma rath, to guard, to charge, to function, obligation, all right? We are now obligated, all right, to, to, to walk in a particular way, just like Abraham. He put off the idols just like we put off the idols. All right. The service. You know, all right. Watch to guard, to watch house of detention or confinement. All right. We're now in, 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 in captivity to, to righteousness. <laughs> all right. We're, we're uh, prisoners of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Keeping, preserving. So the, the, the importance of Abraham, all right, which a lot of Israelites don't know, is that ultimately... You know, he was restored to the legacy of the sons of God that was passed down from Adam through Abel. All right. Then through Seth. All right. Uh, uh, you know, you read about Enoch. All right. Noah at the times that the sons of God were, were doing wickedness was a man who was was created and set up to preserve this legacy. You see, and this legacy was reintroduced to Abraham. And then a covenant was made with him along with the promise Okay, that promise and covenant was passed down through Isaac. Okay, and now we're going to go to Jacob. Okay, just to hit these points real quick. Okay, Genesis 35 and 10. And God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel, Yashar Allah. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. This is to Jacob now. Yaquab. Okay. <laughs> it says, uh, a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. See that? Kings shall come out of thy loins. All right. Here it is. You have these Christians all the time talk about the seed of Abraham. The well, well, are all nations on the earth, did they come out of Abraham? No. Now, there's particular nations on the earth, all right, uh, a lot of the Arab nations, all right, but who was the child of the promise was Isaac, all right, and then Jacob, as we're reading here, a nation and a company of nations, all right, so each tribe is likened unto a nation shall come of thee, and king shall come out of thy loins. What is the loins? So we can make sense of what the Bible is saying. All right. Because here it is. All things are possible in Christianity. Right. All things are possible with God until a nigga. All right. Or so-called Hispanic or Native American stands up and says they're the Israelites. 
then it's like, oh, hell nah. All right? Chalataza. Chalataza. It's another beautiful Hebrew name. All right? But you ain't going to name a brother loins, right? <laughs> All right? Uh, the seat of virility. What is virility? Semen viral. All right? That's life. Sperm. All right? Loins. All right? So we go to the, uh, the root word. All right? To be equipped to withdraw <laughs> all right to pull out <laughs> you get the uh you get the uh, uh the the understand the loins are his 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 sack okay king so come out of thy loins all right and the land which i gave unto abraham and isaac to thee will i give it and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. You see, so the seed after him, we know would be as the sand of the sea. You see, they would be uh, uh, large in number, but when we go to Isaiah, we get an understanding that, okay? Isaiah 10 and 20. Line must be up on line and precept must be up on precept. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them but shall stay upon the Lord the Holy One of Israel in truth meaning we will return to the understanding of who we were we would turn from the mind that Esau has instilled in us okay because he's the one who smote us along with all of these heathen all right but we would lean and trust in Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai the remnant shall return even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. You see that? For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. Return for what? To be heirs to the promise. You see? The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness man because we went through our judgment all right but it's also a promise <laughs> that we're going to be set up and ultimately be uh back in our land man and that's all through the scriptures all right for the lord god of hosts shall make a consumption even uh determined in the midst of all the land all right where where all the israelites are scattered okay there's going to be a remnant whom the lord is going to gather to return man you see now let's see here real quick oh um and this is this is also in the new testament all right when you get uh romans 9 and 27 okay romans 9 and 27 it says isaiah also cried concerning israel though the number of the children of israel should be as the sand of the sea a remnant shall be saved and that remnant all right, are ultimately going to be likened unto the Gentiles, you see, which ties us to Abraham because ultimately we were born worshiping idols and doing all of these wicked practices. But what happened when we got the word, we moved forward, all right, in our purpose and calling. And this chapter also proves that the Gentiles are Israelites. It's just that ultimately as Abraham, you know, they were discontinued, all right, from their legacy all right romans 9 okay and 24 even us whom we have called not only of the jews only the natural branches all right who were raised and born in the customs of knowing all right that they were uh israelites knowing the laws understanding the temple to sacrifice all of those things but also of the gentiles all right which were those who weren't raised in those customs which that was the um back and forth at this time in the new testament it wasn't dealing with actual heathen who became heirs to the promise no all right it says as he said also in hosea it says oh see but it's hosea i will call them my people which were not my people and her my beloved which was not my beloved you see the gentiles were not called his people at one point 
Why? Because they detached and dis, uh, uh, continued from the understanding of who they were and were following idols, which is prophecy. Just like Abraham. Okay? So Abraham was an heir to that promise, all right, because he was keeping the laws perfectly. He was heir to that promise through mercy, all right? But once he got understanding of his purpose and was well acquainted with the Most High God, Yahweh, through his mediator, all right, what happened? He moved in a way and put off those idols, just like us, okay? So in a place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall uh, uh, they be called the children of the living God, the sons of God, all right? And he's quoting Hosea to prove to you that these Gentiles, all right, which are linked to Abraham, are speaking of Israelites. You see, Abraham was still a son of God. He just didn't know until he was awakened, just like you, all right? Just like us. Now, to get the cross-reference, it's going to take you to Hosea, the first chapter, okay, in which uh, uh, Hosea is ultimately told to lay with the harlot and bear children, and he actually did it, all right, this is Hosea 1 and 9, here's the conclusion of the matter, then said God, call his name, lo, I me, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered and it shall come to pass that in that place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there shall it be said unto them ye are the sons of the living God you see that the Gentiles that Romans are referencing to ultimately being called the sons of God are Israelites then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel all right, be gathered together, all 12 tribes, and appoint themselves one head, so and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. All right, Yajra'ala, the seed of the power, all right, which is the remnant. So it says Israel is going to be as the sand of the sea, which was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, but we know according to Isaiah, a remnant will return you see a remnant will return for the purpose of being heirs to that promise you see acts 26 and 6 paul understood this and now i stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of god unto our fathers you see <laughs> unto which promise are 12 tribes you see instantly serving god day and night hope to come the promise is for the 12 tribes, you see, but how that promise would be uh, uh, gotten stirred up a lot of those Jews who were raised in the customs because it would be primarily through the downtrodden, all right, uncircumcised Israelites, which Abraham was uncircumcised when he was brought back to that understanding, man. All right. So real quick, I'll get this and then we'll get into Revelation. All right, this is Exodus 32 and 13. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. Thy servants to whom thou swearest by thine own self. So is the most high a liar? And saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And in all this land that I have spoken of you will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever see that and they shall inherit it forever all right so when you get all right revelation the seventh chapter okay this is ultimately that seed that would be heirs to the promise let's get the book of uh well i just typed in heirs and these are scriptures that uh the christians misinterpret all right, that seed was awakened. Those Gentiles were awakened. All right, to continue that legacy as heirs to that promise. All right, but as the scriptures say, there will be a falling away. All right, and a great awakening in the latter days. All right, for the purpose of fulfilling. All right, so this is Romans 4 and 14. For if they 
which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise is made none effect. All right. Because remember, Abraham was not all right restored to that legacy because he was keeping the law so perfectly. You see now his faith once he, you know, uh, woke up, you know, uh, solidified it. All right. But ultimately uh, it was by mercy. You see. Because the Lord could have just ultimately passed over and, and never restored us to our legacy. Okay. Uh, Romans uh, 8 and 17. And if children, the sons of God, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Hamashiach. Because he's going to be at the forefront of us returning to that land. Okay. And if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. All right. And the proof is ultimately when you go back to Melchizedek, who blessed Abraham, he was already king of Salem, king of peace. All right. King of Jerusalem and peace will ultimately be issued. All right. Uh, throughout the whole earth. All right. Starting at Jerusalem. All right. Where uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven will start. OK. Uh, Galatians 3 and 29 and if ye be Hamashiach then are ye are Abraham's seed you see through Isaac and Jacob which are of the faith all right peace be to the Israel of God not all Israel of Israel the Lord is only dealing with a remnant and as it says in Romans the 11 chapter there is a remnant according to grace all right the election of grace that we elected all right to be justified man and heirs according to the promise. What promise? All right. Ultimately, the promise of that land in the kingdom of heaven. So this is Revelation 7 and 1. All right. It's good to understand those things. All right. Before moving forward. That's why I did that. All right. Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And the four angels have dominion over the destruction that is coming to Babylon the Great in various different parts of the earth. You know, World War Three, mass plagues, you know, and the, the utter destruction in the end of Esau's world. All right. But they can't do that until the, the, the that elect is sealed. OK, this is uh, verse two. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, all right, having the seal of the living God, all right, the complete, all right, of, of, of the gospel, man, the completion of the gospel, which in it is what? The, 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 the last plagues, man, you see, that are going to be issued forth on the earth, which ultimately is going to usher in the return of Yahawashai to gather his elect. Remember, Yahweh Shai is coming to gather his elect. All right, let's get Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another. See that? And how will the elect be gathered? All right. After being in a dead state in the spiritual Sodom in Egypt and the heathen rejoicing over us. All right. The spirit of life from God would enter into them. OK. And the people would see us waking up and that's happening right now. You see. But in verse 12. All right. Those who were once dead, who've returned to that lively state, just like Abraham. OK, who, who, who was serving idols in Ur of the Chaldees. All right. A physical Babylon. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. OK, so this is coming. No matter how many lies people tell on the scriptures, these prophecies are coming to pass, man. OK. So Revelation uh, uh, seven and two. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea showing you that there's complete order in the heaven saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of God in our 
in in a of our, of our God in their foreheads. All right, and who's he the God of? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, that's all throughout the scriptures, man. Okay, so the servants of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, would have to be sealed. All right, in their foreheads. All right, and I heard the number of them which were sealed. Let's look up this word sealed. Okay. Sealed. Strong's G 4972. Sfragidza. Sfragidza. All right. It says uh, to set a seal upon, mark with a seal, to seal for security from Satan. Okay, now when you get uh, Ezekiel 9 and 4, you read that on your own, it says, Set a mark, which is thawa, upon the forehead of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay, so these men, ultimately, whether in heaven or in earth, <laughs> as you can read that in uh, Revelation 6 and 9, are set, all right, to be sealed, all right, and marked and justified okay uh, uh security from satan all right to hide to keep inside to keep secret and that's what the elect are man all right to set a mark upon by the impress of a seal or a stamp and this is a spiritual mark see esau has a carnal mark but there's a spiritual mark placed upon the servants of yahweh by shemel shai okay to prove, confirm, or to attest the thing, to justify us. That's why the scriptures say, who can lay any charge to God's elect? It is God who justified, man. Okay? A written document is written in our members, all right? Uh, uh, in our spirit, man. All right? To prove one's testimony to a person that he is what he professes to be. All right? And what is the number of those that are sealed? Okay, and I heard the number of them which are sealed. All right, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. All right, this is the head under Yahweh Shai of the governing body. All right, that are sealed with the instruction, the knowledge, wisdom, and the new song. All right, when you get Revelation the fourteenth chapter, it explains the role and purpose of the 144 which are what mount zion which what is that Zion is where jerusalem the temple set this is the spiritual temple the tabernacle of god is with men this is the tabernacle of david okay revelation 14 and 1 and i looked and lo a lamb stood on mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads it's written in their members in their minds to overcome as we always say salvation is written and starts in the minds of the elect what did Yahweh Shai tell uh, 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 Peter and his followers the kingdom of heaven is in you okay because it starts with this wisdom okay being sealed in our minds man and going out and preaching it okay the 144,000 as you read they have the new song you see, the new song is the fulfillment of the gospel and the doctrine. And they would sing that song, all right, to those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. But whether you have ears to hear and eyes to see, what they are singing and what they are saying is going to come to pass. And this is what people don't understand. All of the naysayers, they're talking, but look what's happening worldwide. Prophecies are being fulfilled, man. Okay? And real quick just to look up Mount Sion okay because this is the governing body okay Sion or Sion it says a parched place it says the hill on which the higher and more ancient part of Jerusalem was built going to see since Jerusalem because the temple stood there was called the dwelling place of God okay and where's the law going to go forth from in the kingdom? Jerusalem. All right. But instead of an actual physical temple, this is the temple. Yahweh Shai and the 144,000, man. Okay. 
And what are they known as? The first fruits. See that? The first fruits. Uh, uh, Revelation 14 and 4, 144. These are they which were not defiled with women, meaning those different philosophies, they were ultimately overcome. All right, and, and, and keep on the path, and they would not bow to the image of Baal, man, for they are virgins. You see, what did Paul say? I've espoused you unto one husband to present you as a chaste virgin unto Hamashiach. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. All right, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits of God unto God and unto the lamb. Now, when we look up the first fruits, all right, the first fruits. A park, a parka, or a parke. I just hit the point. Person superior in excellence to others of the same class because there will be rank in our kingdom, right? Now, really quick, let's get uh, 1 Corinthians 15 to make this point. Then we'll just read through Revelation 7. Okay. This is Revelation 15. And what does it say? The order of the resurrection. <laughs> All right. It says, But now is Hamashiach risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. All right. I'm going to just jump to the point. Verse 22 For as in Adam all die, even so in Hamashiach shall all be made alive. All right. And who died? The sons of God. You know, after that fall, we've struggled. You know, pretty much as a, you know, as the chosen seed of the Heavenly Father to stay on that righteous path, man. But the Heavenly Father has always given us particular men or a remnant of men, okay, to, to stick to these ways and to bring our people, all right, uh, uh, comfort. And that's happening in this time as well, okay, on a large scale, man. You, you brothers don't understand, all right, and all of you, even the ones who are, are listening, you don't understand the power of what you're involved in. All right. We have to really, really sit back and, and take, you know, uh, t a deep breath and, 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 and mole on that. OK. It says, even so, in Hamashiach shall all be made alive. The second Adam. But every man in his own order. Hamashiach, the first fruits. All right. Afterward, they that are Hamashiachs at his coming. You see that? So the, the first fruits, the 144, are the beginning of that. But afterward, as we're going to get, they that are Hamashiachs at his coming. So the 144, Revelation 144, it's a lock here. Revelation, the seventh chapter. Hey, call hello, you how about you, you know, The 144 are the, 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 the servants, the prophets. As it says in Sirach, raise up prophets that have been in thy name. All right. Now, are all of these 144,000 going to be on the earth? No, some. All right. Are in the spiritual realm, but they will be raised up first. All right. And those who are ultimately uh, um, on the earth who are of that number, they will be caught up in a cloud with them. All right. As well as with the rest, as we're going to read. But everybody will be in their order. You see what I'm saying? But it starts with Yahweh Shai and the 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. This is the remnant, all right, of the tribe of Judah, 12,000, of the tribe of Reuben, Gad. Now, vocab said this isn't literally speaking of, uh, of the actual uh, uh, tribes of Israel, you see, which ultimately is anti-Messiah doctrine. And this is what they've been able to spread throughout the earth for years. But now we're here. All right. Now, as you read down, it goes through all of the tribes, the uh, 12,000. Now, you'll you'll see that the, uh, the tribe of Dan is not mentioned. OK. And there's nowhere in the Bible where we can gain understanding on why not. Right. But in the kingdom of heaven, we'll understand all things. So what we'll do. All right. Is stick to what the scriptures say. All right. These are going to be. All right, the governing body, all right, the priesthood under Melchizedek, the king of uh, uh, Salem, priest of the Most High God. All right, so you can read from seven to eight, and it gives you the 12,000 out of each tribe. See that? 
Now, as you read down, it says, and after this, now what did we read in 1 Corinthians 15? Hamashiach, Yahawashai, all right, the first fruits, and also they that are his after his coming. All right, those who he's going to have mercy on. That's why we open the videos up. Peace and salutations to the elect, starting with the Tabernacle of David, all right, which is the governing body, as well as the large multitude, which will consist of the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on. You see? And that's out of all nations on the earth. And we'll get that in just a minute, but let's get this in Revelation 11 chapter. Okay, Revelation 11 okay in 18 and this is where we at all right and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and to them that fear thy name small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth so the reward is coming all right unto the servants the prophets the 144,000 and the saints and to them that fear thy name small and great so yes there's going to be rank and you have those who are going to receive mercy for simply praying for the elect for simply being in a particular spirit giving the elect you know cups of water you know uh, uh, helping brothers out you know helping to build the tabernacle of David because when you help the men of the Lord, you're helping to build the tabernacle of David. That's in Matthew, the 25th chapter. You see what you have done unto the least of my brethren. You see, you have done unto me. So there is a reward coming for them as well. All right. And ultimately some, the Lord just going to have mercy on because he wants to have mercy on them. And we say that a large portion, all right, of, uh, of this large multitude will mo will most likely be women and i believe that as well because there's always been more women than men on the earth okay and we're going to be the highest functioning business and nation and seed the earth has ever seen all right from top to bottom we will be immaculate all right but yahweh shine on 144 as it says the house of david will be as god all right, but there is also a blessing for the rest of Israel, man. Okay, the wives of, of the prophets, the children, all right, the men who, who believe they may not necessarily be prophets. Hey, you're going to be set up, change, new bodies, great. All right, doing, uh, uh, doing the, the bidding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai under the 144 in the kingdom of heaven, man. So, uh, uh, Revelation 7 and 9, and after this, so after the 144,000, you see, because I always ask the question, is the Lord only going to save 144,000? All right. But then a large multitude of the heathen? No, there's rank and order to this thing. You see, and remember, Israel would be as the sand of the sea, but a remnant will return. I'm going to keep harping on that. This is that remnant. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes and palms in their hand. Palms represent victory. You see, and when Yahweh you know, came into uh, Jerusalem on that uh, uh, donkey, you know, they waved palms. Okay, but this is going to be Yahweh and the 144, you know, being a congratulated, crowned, everybody in just complete and utter happiness, man. Mirth. Okay. And cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God. Now, who's he the God of? Let's get that in uh, Luke. Luke 1. Okay, so we'll be all right. Just hold on. All right. I know a lot of you, are, you get impatient, but patience is a part of our sacrifice, man. We'll be all right. You got women who are, oh, I don't have a husband. The Lord is going to take care of you. If, you, if, you, if you're sincere, all right, the Lord is going to, you're going to be all right, man. Okay. 
Luke 1 and 60 that blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he hath visited and redeemed his people and have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the uh, in the house of his servant David which is Yahweh Shai as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began okay so let's read 7 and 9 again and after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations see and kindreds now let's look up this word kindreds all right remember this is the seed of Abraham Isaac and Jacob receiving that promise all right Fula or Fule a tribe in the New Testament all persons ascending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob a nation a people and what was the promise to Jacob Genesis 35 and 11 and God said unto him I am God Almighty be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins you see in the land that I gave to Abraham and to Isaac to thee will I give it and to thy seed after thee will I give the land okay so we're reading about the seed after him that would get the land okay real quick okay this is Ezekiel 37 as the men of the Lord all right that's what he, uh, Ezekiel represents in this chapter preaching all right the 12 tribe sign and everything all right a uh, uh, hey, verse 20 in the sticks wherein thou writest the names of the tribes all right Judah and Ephraim being joined back together shall be in thine hand before their eyes this is the the 12 tribes chart right here in prophecy all right and say unto them thus said the Lord God behold I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen whether they be gone and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king to them and they shall be no more two nations which has not happened since King Solomon's fall neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all the Lord is going to bring us back together this is a fulfillment of the throne of David but what is the purpose to being gathered to bring us back into our own land also Ezekiel 36 and 19 and I scattered them among the heathen because of the curse see when we read the curses that that curse is to the seed of Abraham Isaac and Jacob see one of the curses was to be scattered among the heathen and learn their works you see so I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through all the countries according to their way and according to their doings I judged them and when they entered into the heathen they went and profaned my holy name did not Abraham do that was not Abraham following idols was not his father a follower of idols see <laughs> When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and are going forth out of this land. But I had pity for my holy name's sake, which the house of Israel profane among the heathen, whether they went. All right. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus said the Lord God, I do this not for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye went. And I will sanctify my great name which was profaned among the heathen do you see that <laughs> which you profane in the midst of them and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes so the heathen ain't no part of this you just got to know how to put the pieces together Christianity has done a, a great job of taking advantage of the English language all right and uh, the simplicity of people man but that's where the true teachers come in and that's why we're a burden unto these people a burdensome stone all right because now they're like oh shit well how did they come to these how did they you know well it's the holy spirit is how see the remnant being gathered starts with this word being preached and it's not going to look like the most immaculate thing this earth has ever seen it's actually going to look very low according to the scriptures 
the base things of the world are what God ch chose to confound the wise, the weak things to confound the mighty. You see? So I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. See that? Revelation 7 and 9. And after this, I beheld, lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes, meaning they're justified. See, they're clean. They're washed. See, and palms in their hands. Okay. And cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb. Showing you that the most high and the lamb are two separate powers, man. You see, and the angels that stood round about the throne and the elders and the four beasts fell upon before the uh, before the throne on their face, faces and worshiped God, saying, Amon, this is in the heavens, man. This, as we're beamed up, being glorified, man, it's going to be rejoicing, man. All right. But this is a vision that John is seeing blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might unto our God forever and ever. Amon. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they? All right. Because these are going to be Israelites from all different nations and tongues and no matter how they look no matter what tongue they're speaking but they're going to be delivered man okay and whence came they and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said unto me these be they which have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the lamb going back to ezekiel 36 and 24, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Okay, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. See, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit and I will put with you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land I gave your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. See that? The land which I gave unto your fathers, which is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? <laughs> we are going to get it. The remnant under Yahawashai. Okay, are heirs to that promise. You see? Now, real quick, also in uh Second Edras, the second chapter, it speaks on this very same thing. Let me end it off in just a minute. Second Edras two and twenty. Take thy number, O Sion. <laughs> Mount Zion, Mount Zion, the monument of the Heavenly Father, which is the temple, man. The spiritual temple. He remembered us and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. No heathen is a part of this, man. Now, these people, these, these, this remnant being set up will eventually lead to the whole earth. All right. Being turned back into paradise. So, yes, it's a blessing for everyone. See, but to, to the heathen, it's a blessing in disguise. Once it's all set up, they'll be like, damn, now we see. You know, once the rod of iron and they see Esau destroyed and they, they you know, they start, you know, we're going to implement the law. We're going to beat it into them, man. But this this party right here. OK, those that are shut up in clothing, well, this is all Israel, man. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. The remnant. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. And I, Edra, saw on Mount Sion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with song. So this is the same thing happening here. You see that? You got Yahawashai, the 144, 
in that large multitude, man. The remnant. You see? Everybody has their lot, right? But this is what it's for, man. To be hollowed, set apart. That's the first dominion, man. I, Ezra, saw on Mount Sinai a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of high stature, taller than the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was exalted. All right, the more. And I marveled greatly. Okay? So I asked the angel, Sir, what are these? And he said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, and have put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and receive palms, which represents victory. And I said, What young person is this that crowneth them? So he answered and said, It is the Son of God whom they confessed in the world. Then I began to greatly commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. So this is a blessing, man. What we're ultimately what we've awakened for, people don't understand the the how relevant and how important it is for us to do what we're doing. It's a sacrifice, but guess what? Look what it's gonna lead to. You see? Hey, <laughs> What does this say? This is Zechariah 8 and 12. For the seed for the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and O house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. See, fear not, but let your hands be strong. Be strong, man. You see, the remnant are going to possess all of these things. Why? Because it was promised to Abraham, his seed, Isaac, his seed, Jacob, and his seed, which would be as the sand of the sea. But to restore it, a remnant will return. Okay? Revelation 7. All right. And, and, and no other nation are under the blood of the lamb. The first and second covenant are only for Israelites. See, that blood was only sprinkled. All right. For Israel. All right. In particular, starting with the elect for that second covenant, because it's a remnant. Who are going to be heirs to that promise brought into that bond. And then once the rebels are purged out. Every Israelite will be born into the covenant. What's that? Isaiah 59. <clears throat> In 21, as for me, this is my covenant with them, said the Lord, and my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed forever. All right. And forever. <laughs> All right. Saith the Lord right so let's finish this out revelation 7 and 14 okay uh they, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb therefore are they before the throne of god and serve him day and night in his temple all right which they are the temple all right Starting with the tabernacle of David and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them because we will be into that second covenant. You see, and they shall hunger no more because we'll never be separated from our power ever again. All right. We'll be married back to the heavenly father as that chaste virgin. That's why we're dressed in white. See, and that's why it starts with the doctrine. See, what did Paul say real quick? Second Corinthians 11 and 2, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin unto Hamashiach, you see, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through a subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Hamashiach. And that's what they want. Vocab, all of them want you to be corrupted. They don't want you to be presented to the heavenly father as a chaste virgin. You see, that's why they're coming after that remnant, because 
it all starts with this word going out. Remember, it said of the 144, for there are virgins, right? Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Now, this is speaking of the dragon, which is what? The ancient Roman Empire, which today is fulfilled in Babylon, the great, the NATO and the EU, Esau. Now, what did they do? They destroyed the physical temple in 70 AD. Now they see a spiritual temple being raised up. So they are trying to figure out a way to destroy the remnant. You see? But they can't stop it, man. So I'm going to end it off. Revelation 7 and 16. And they shall hunger no more. Neither shall they thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. That's not saying the sun ain't going to be there anymore but we will be the light the light will be in us right we will be uh, kings and priests on the earth man but the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall dwell and feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and god shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes which you can read about that also in revelation 21 so with that I'm going to just end it off before I think of something else. Hopefully I will edify. This is uh, this is very important to understand, man. All right. The remnant. <laughs> the remnant has returned, baby. All right. And from that point on, hey, we only go up. So, Shalom.